check on that. Okay, okay. okay. it's now 1400 or 2 o'clock for those of you that know that term. Uh, and I'll call them in either order. And I would ask everyone to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, please be seated. Um, Laura, Aaron is waiting in the waiting room. I just sent him the link. He was in the wrong room. Okay. Um, <laughs> in the wrong room. That's funny. <laughs> he went to the wrong office. <laughs> okay. Any items that you late for the agenda? I believe so. Okay. So, any public comments? Jeremiah, has anyone indicated an interest in making a public comment? Not at this time. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the only item we have on the agenda here is a discussion of our intent to participate in the uh, general election coming up in November. You know, we've yeah. all been... Yeah. Sorry. We've all been uh, recipients of some of the emails that were provided us uh, from our public who have expressed uh, regret that we're pursuing this. A lot of negative things have come up, I guess, that I've talked about. I would just say that I spoke to the go the, uh, the mayor a couple of weeks ago, and his comment to me, which I passed on to Randy, was, have you considered uh, detapering some of your assets and maybe a chance to use some money that you wouldn't have otherwise? So I have a look at that, but I'm not talking to Randy about it. So I don't know where we are if you looked at that. Yeah, I did. And so I, I kind of... Uh, I went out and uh, um, there was a thick document that the uh, Colorado Municipal League. Well, it's a tattoo of taxes, so it's probably minor A and or minor. Uh, it's pretty minor. close. Yeah. But they do talk about detapering and it actually talk about it as deep bruising. Um, and what that ends up being is um, we would be asking to keep um, excess revenue over our limit. So I went back and looked uh, about 10 years back. And in 2018, um, when Mike was calculating this, Mike Barnett, um, basically if, if it exceeded four, it became four. So um, the one that I, I was able to calculate out a difference, it was about $175,000 more that we would have gotten if we'd been debruised, which isn't a lot of money. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, another, I think it was 2015, 14 and 13. So 13, 14 and 15, we hit that max. I wasn't able to calculate a number, but the, uh, number that was showing on 13 and 14 over four was very small. So it wasn't going to amount to a whole lot of money. And that's basically because all we are calculating this on is property tax and, uh, the mill levy number without getting in the weeds too much. Last year's number times the Tabor factors, which is uh, inflation and CPI from last year. All this information from the previous year. The assessed valuation from the previous year. So it's not for your current period. But um, so that meant basically all those years when we took last year's rate times those inflation uh, Tabor factors, we uh, divide that into your assessed property value that everybody talks about. It's mm -hmm. net. And that's how Mike came up with these um, percentages. So every year you see a different number. It's because the numbers are all different every single year. Um, I started to write out an explanation to somebody that we don't have a set dollar amount every year. In fact, I doubt the library's ever seen the same revenue number one year after the other, just because there's three or four different <coughs> factors of numbers that are changing constantly. And then the other thing that happens is uh, when we're putting our budget together, we're doing it on the current year we're in for next year's budget. 
Well, we don't know exactly what this year's ending number is going to be. So in fact, for next year's budget, I'm going to have to try my best to guesstimate where, you know, based on what our uh, mill calculation that was uh, certified for last year's budget to see, you know, basically where I think we're going to be. Um, and that's where you kind of end up with uh, uh, pluses and minuses as far as what we owe the state some extra or they owe us because it's never going to be exactly precise to what your actual number comes into. So I guess you got to rely on some kind of special uh, equipment. Do they have like a crystal ball or Excel a schedule. easy bar? Or something like that, right? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of computations. And, and I actually, um, after we had uh, Taylor and I and uh, Kim, which you guys haven't met yet, um, we're in a meeting and after that we talked about the, the budget and so I stayed after and kind of worked through these calculations and, and what drives what. And I had known it before, but I do a little better just seeing it in a schedule. But So if I see the uh, mayor again, I could say, yeah, we looked at it and uh, have an idea of what that means, but it varies every year. So yeah, and yeah. and in the last 10 years, we haven't even had half of our years over the 4%. And when it's been over the 4%, it's been a very small percentage. So that's 200,000 probably. Yeah, it wouldn't amount to a whole lot of money. I don't even know that the amount of money we've been over in the last 10 years would pay for a ballot. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, on top of those kind of things, the feedback we get here, I mean, the other issue that, that I was concerned about initially was the fact that our economy is going to go down the tubes at a time when people are paying more for things uh, if they can get them. And uh, it's like it's going to be worse and better than better. And so at a time when that's facing all of our, uh, our patrons and all the people in the community, um, this is a smart thing to do. Should we? I mean, it's like poking them in the eye. In some cases, we're asking for an increase in taxes. And they're saying, oh, boy, we need we need reduction taxes, you know, basically to help in our income, and whatnot. But anyway, that's that's yeah. something to be thinking about. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so looking at that, I don't think we're always going to be in a situation like that. The economy is not going to stay like this. I I anticipate it to moving up uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, may not happen until the election's over, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's something we're thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, and it is it is cyclical. I mean, obviously, we all know that. Yeah. So the reason the reason I uh, I asked for having this meeting is so we can just take a look at that and have an opportunity to express, you know, your interests, your concerns, uh, questions you may have, whatever else. I do have one. Okay. I didn't get to say this because I was on the <laughs> I was having trouble with my audio, but I I was thinking about everything after I listened to the whole meeting, and obviously, you all know my stance, my vote so far. Um. I guess the thing that shook me most was that I did not know how much it costs to get on the ballot. I had no idea. I mean, I guess I didn't know to ask that question. And I was wondering, if just in general, did everybody else know that? I'm sure I know meaning you probably did because I knew you headed this up, but I didn't know that. And that alone was like mind blowing for me because we are worried about the you know, the bottom line, the budget, and then to know that it was going to cost that much money just to put something on the ballot to then see the comments and assume that that might, I know it, it was a small section of the, you know, the community to comment, but if there are any indication of what people are looking at or thinking, I mean, that's completely different than what we were looking at as far as the polling. So that was all super concerning to me is how, you know, how did, how did I not know that it was going to cost that much money? And if it, if it did, is it going to be worth it to us? Okay. The reason you didn't know, I think, nobody ever brought it up to me. Okay. I mean, nobody ever said anything about this that I know of. I so know. you all kind of didn't know that uh, either. Yeah. We talked about it. Okay. I was, yeah. That's what I was hoping is that it was just something that I missed because I was coming into the back end of this and that I just didn't know to ask the question. So I think again, like if we go back to our public affairs meetings from previous months and the intention and honoring the polling process, looking at the data and using data alone sure. as one factor, 
putting this on our what month is this? Our July board meeting for discussion. Yeah. With um, a conversation for intention to put on the ballot is one thing, right? So I'll take I'll use my own stance. So obviously I want the library to be successful. And I know that takes revenue increase in order for that to happen. The reason why we wanted to at least explore this option was to hear from the public. You know, I mean, Fair you enough. can use one set of data yeah. from the polling and say it's probably some of the best polling that our third party administrator has ever seen. And why would we not want to at least try to pursue that? So my rationale for moving in a direction of at least exploring that was to see and really take the temperature of our community. That being said, when we put it out there, it was, you know, we were wanting to receive feedback. We were right. wanting to understand the pulse of the community. And yes, we do hear from those that are going to articulate and be most vocal versus those that are supportive, sure. but don't necessarily maybe vocalize how they feel. So we're hearing the, the state of the world. We are hearing so many other factors that are in reverse from the polling. So using multiple data sets, you know, we, we then come to this meeting where we're having to make a decision or to consider and talk about what makes the most sense going forward, recognizing that the investment from, you know, actually just putting the ballot measure onto the ballot with maybe a possibility of a different climate is something that we as I think board trustees really need to take into consideration. So I think all of those factors and the intention, again, I use the word intention mm -hmm. because that was the purpose of our vote last month. Sure. Right. To intend to potentially put a ballot measure on with the opportunity for right. input. And I think that's where we're at right now. So I think we just need to make sure that we reiterate the fact in a public process that we were here to hear the voice of our community using data that was very favorable for the library district at a point in time, and then hearing this current point in time and saying, what makes sense going forward? I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's important that the, a lot of the, it, you know, if we have anybody listening or if we have anybody, you know, reading the transcript of this, that they do know that the polling showed at the time right. that things were favorable, but clearly within the time that that polling was done and when we had this vote, things changed right. a lot. And then we have to recognize also, you know, reading the comments, reading the commentary that not moving forward with this does create limitations for the library district. Sure. Therefore, when it comes down to the choices that our administration and leadership have to make when it comes to physical locations, where it come, when it comes to types of services that are available to our patrons and our public, that this is justified based on the fact that these decisions were made because the public is not favorable of supporting something like this. Yeah. So that is a clear message that we then have to articulate alongside the fact that we are willing to step into this space. Are you willing to step into it with us? Agreed. I think that's what we're yeah. going to do, right? And is if represent you're not, the public, so. then we need to then make hard decisions. So then when you have then complaints about why is that not open? Why is this not available? We have justification. I'm cracking yeah. up because it sounds like I'm talking about it sounds like a conversation I've had in my head with my 10 year old where I say listen this is gonna happen but here's what's gonna happen okay right? so. so this is your choice and you know again like we I think all of us honor the the questions that are posed to us by patrons by the public by our community because mm -hmm. we are representatives of our community and we are members of this community and we're trying to make the best sound decision for for the library district, but also to benefit this region. So, what I have to say. Well said. Well, I was interviewed both by TV and uh, uh, the Gazette. And in both of those interviews, I said this was just for the intent. That does not mean it's going on the ballot. We're still exploring those things. Um, 
And I was asked, well, how will you make decisions if you decide not to go forward on the ballot or if you were on the ballot and it didn't pass? And I, I personally, just like we've taken the pulse of the public, and I don't know how it's going to work because it's in the leadership hands of, but just like we continually asked our public to give us feedback. <clears throat> When we have those hard questions of what's going to happen with services, et cetera, hours, whatever we're going to have to look at, I think the public should give us that feedback. How willing are you to, for your, the library you go to, to now be just open till four o'clock or whatever the case may be? And I, I do think that that's one of the things if, if we decide to go down that route, that we continually ask our public for their input, uh, because we we are here representing them. Um, so everyone knows what my stance has been on this too, and and I will say that that um, I read all those comments, and I and I understand people who don't support um, a tax increase. I, I really get that. I have had comments personally to me that are favorable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to know who represents a majority of people. Um, given that though, and given at least the official feedback that we have, um, I guess the thing that has always been important to me in this is that people who are affected by the decisions we make, I felt ought to have a chance to weigh in on it. Um, I too am bothered by how much it costs to get something on the ballot. And just in general, I in mean, general, it's kind of crazy. but that's yeah. not going to change. <laughs> it's not going to be cheaper next year or 10 years or whenever. That's that's going to still be there. Um, the other thing that that I think we need to figure out a better way of communicating um, how much it costs to <clears throat> open a branch on the east side of town. How much does it cost to staff a branch? How, because when people say, well, you shouldn't have done away with overdue book fines. Well, that doesn't open a branch. I mean, it and and so we have to to really be transparent with, you know, it's not just we're going to buy ten less books. You know, it's it's big, um, and and it does affect people. So I, I have to say that I am disappointed, um, not not that people said I wouldn't vote for it because I don't expect it to be a unanimous thing, but I am disappointed in people who felt like no one should have the opportunity to vote on it. I'm, I'm disappointed about that. I do understand that we live in difficult and uncertain times. And um, I'm trying to remember a time when we did not because it seems like there's always not a good time to do things and it's hard to figure out the perfect time this is obviously not a perfect time in my view but but um i do agree that we're going to have to involve people in in figuring out what the solution is if it's if it's not more resources then it's less library at some point i think any governmental entity, quasi-governmental entity, they continue to, to do what they can with what they have and go beyond, right? You are creative in, in the ways in which you deliver services, deliver opportunities, truly for those that are probably most under-resourced. Exactly. And more than likely, the way in which those that are most under-resourced articulate what they need, it is not through a public comment process. Right. Right. So 
thinking and considering those factors and who actually utilizes the library. The purpose of the library is to have an equitable space for everyone, regardless of where you come from, what your income is, how you fit in the world. And, and that part is really, that was troublesome for me reading things like that, like having fines eliminated. The purpose of that was to demonstrate equity. You may be right. late a couple of days and you may owe a dollar, but that dollar to that individual might be what they need to contribute to their family's food budget because they maybe couldn't get to the library for whatever reason or another. I mean, I'm creating an example, but eliminating those fines built some equity within the library district because you're thinking about access and opportunity. And I think that's what the library needs to, con is, is represents and stands for and should continue to do that. But again, when we think about who is most served by our district, it's sometimes those that have the least means and will therefore not articulate what they truly need, how they truly feel. On that note, I do agree with you on that. Um, but you know what concerns me a little bit too from this, you know, this standpoint is that those are the people we're also asking to contribute to this trip who may or may not Absolutely. have the ability, you know, so I, I see both sides of that yeah. for sure, yeah. you know, yeah. that we want to help those people that can't necessarily help themselves. We're also yeah. asking them to help. help. Also, if they are homeowners. <laughs> homeowners. Yeah, not, right. That's yes. true, too. I mean, there's yeah, certainly that's, that's, that's a whole, whole yeah. <laughs> yeah. Level. yeah. Those true. are all real, real right. questions, right? You know, right. I was thinking it'd be nice if a, uh, a renewal vote could pay that bill for us, put this on a ballot. We're asking us for money all the time to help support this and that, whatever else. She might be back after a you know, but hey, it's just a good idea. Anybody else have any? Scott or Aaron, do you have anything you'd like to share? I'm good right now. I think um, I said pretty much everything I had to say at the last meeting. I mean, I could probably dig some more stuff up, but I think I'm good right now. Well, one of the things we're going to do before we close this meeting is uh, we take a vote. I think, I think Scott unmuted himself. Yeah, I, I, I did. And a lot of things that have as been said uh, during this meeting and the last meeting are what I feel about it. The other thing is, is that it 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 is important that we have support not only from the community, but from also of our our elected officials. And based on some of the information that I've been told is, is we would not get any uh, support from our our officials, our elected officials. And in fact, some people may be adamantly opposed to it if we were to move forward with this. Um, I know we don't need it, but it does help a lot when we're looking at going to the taxpayers and asking for some additional funding. Now, in addition to that, as uh, Aaron uh, Bentz pointed out, is, is that economy is not doing too well right now. And I, I, I did read one of the comments that we had that said, um, yes, $60 a year may not impact me or a lot of those other families. But I think Aaron said this, uh, Aaron Saltz said this last time um, about 60 bucks can really impact a lot of families uh, in the Colorado Springs area. Um, those that are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and that to me, knowing where we're going in this economy, I don't think that asking them to fork over more money to us, when there are some things that we could probably fix or change within our, our uh, budget, um, specifically, you know, I love getting library books one or two days later, but if we made changes there where the uh, uh, couriers that we use are not making daily deliveries or multiple deliveries a day, that they're making one, two day, uh, one or two deliveries a week uh, to certain branches, I think that would be something that we could look at. Um, there are, are some other things that we could also look at to, to figure out 
if we don't move forward with this, then how could we save uh, some money? Um, I do agree with Debbie uh, that, you know, building libraries, I, I, I will admit capital money, getting capital is easier than expense. Um, it, it takes a lot of money to run a library. And we've been wanting to do libraries in a few areas for several years, even before I was on the board, there were discussions about building a few more libraries, but it's not the capital that we have a problem with. It's how do we maintain the same quality of service that we're doing for all the other libraries? Um, because we don't want to build a library and then have it go under a year later um, because we can't afford to keep it open. Um, and we don't want to impact all the other libraries because certain libraries are having issues with keeping up um, when it comes to how much money we're spending on expenses. So I, I know that there are a lot of things that we want to do as a, as a board. There are a lot of things that the library wants to do as, a, as, as uh, the library wants to do. Um, but I don't think this is the proper time to do it. Do I think next year will be better? I am hoping that it'll be better. Um, but I just don't think that this is the year to do it. So that's my two cents. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> Appreciate your comments. Um, John, do you have any, anything to, well, what if we uh, did not do this? What, uh, what, what we might have to cut or change or do differently uh, in our library system? I'm not really sure that's the purview of the board to really. Well, well, I'm uh, asking her what, what she sees as a possible right. impact. Well, Okay, so so I don't think this is the proper discussion area to talk about that. Uh, that's something that we as a board are responsible for the budget, approving the budget. I think that it is up to the leadership team to go back. If it indeed requires that we do look at where we can save money to actually go back and build the budget based on what they think they can cut without diminuing or, or stopping some of the services that we're using today. Uh, I, I, I really don't think putting somebody on the spot to say, hey, what do you think we could cut is, is probably a good idea without actually going back and looking at how much we're spending on certain activities or certain services or things like that, and then providing that information back. I'm, I'm sure that either Randy or Tiona or somebody would be able to do that at a later date, but I don't think that trying to put them on the spot right now to do it is a good idea. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I wasn't going to put it on, on, the, on the spot, just to ask a general feeling and the sensing of, okay, if we don't get this thing through, what are we going to lose some things that we're doing now that, or make some changes to what's going on? I mean, just kind of get a general idea. So, I'm, I, Yes, obviously we would need to make some modification and changes. Also, um, Dora was there, we reviewed the data that was provided for us to put together a strategic plan. Uh, public did speak their mind what they want to see in our spaces, in our collections, in our offerings, and all, what it means that we won't be, um, we, can, we won't be able to afford all of their requests. And, uh, what uh, we are putting together in a strategic plan going forward. So that's also, because I know all of you mentioned public comments, public input, and of course we are here public servants, but um, that's also another thing you need to take consideration when you will review the strategic plan. All of that would be based on the data provided by the public, and they do want us to open our libraries longer. They do want us to have facilities. They want us to expand our collection. It's kind of in a nutshell. Um, and they also, I, I, I'm sure our staff would appreciate to hear that. There is a lot of emphasis on our staff, investment in our staff, making sure that we retain um, uh, the high, highly quality. qualified uh, quality staff. So it's that's kind of in a nutshell. That's where we are. But um, like, and again, it will be the work of working with leadership team and identifying that. But uh, just also for all of the board of trustees to be also thinking about the strategic plan that um, what are the areas we have there that people want us to address. Thank you. If I could say one more thing, just you know, considering being a 21st century library, innovation is a key factor in 
how libraries show up in communities, there, this creates limitations. And we then cannot compare ourselves in our Pikes Peak region to other libraries that are funded differently and also have different values or you know kind of considerations so it, it gets really tricky to say we want to be innovative and have innovative opportunities and innovative things for our community but yet these limitations are real and we have to accept that if that's where we choose to move very well said i agree uh i invite all of you to uh uh watch a video uh, that was on CBS mornings on a Sunday morning. Did you see that on yeah. the library? It's a YouTube yep. thing. And, uh, and libraries, uh, sometimes I believe that um, many, many of our community members have a different idea of what a library is and what it is today compared to what it was when I sat in a library in a corner. He was yeah. establishing libraries is yeah. very different. Well, yeah. So I I do think uh, I'm glad that Tiona brought up the data that we have worked off of for the strategic plan that all of us will have to approve at some point. Um, and what will happen? Uh, I know that's a two, three year plan, but uh, as we look at innovation and what that means, uh, how it will affect us. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I think it can affect us in more ways than one. Um, it's hard enough to uh, find employees, but to retain highly qualified employees is also just as difficult in this day and age. Uh, uh, so I, I give kudos to them all the time because of the work that they do and how well they've done it. But I do think that there's going to have to be a limitation on what we offer in programming, what we offer in collections. Um, of course, we've been very fortunate. I think that we can still do uh, lots of things um, versus uh, borrowing or whatever throughout the state. Um, but how many people really are now just reading online? That data in itself just baffles me. So uh, I think we're going to have to look. It's going to be a hard look at all the data that's been provided to us, whether it's data from a third party or data from our own community that they've provided. Uh, and look at everything that we have before decisions are made. And I firmly believe that decisions aren't made here at our table because I represent a minute uh, few and I would want to really have community involved in what needs to be taken care of because uh, then it's a community decision just like if we go to the ballot we should make the decision whether this or that, it goes to the ballot of what people need. So, um, and that's my strong belief. And I also want to remind ourselves, it's a public library and it address, it should, we should be able to address the needs of all. It's not a significant few. Yeah, yeah, ultimately, you know, what we do or what we don't do is going to be left up to the leadership team and the folks who actually run the library to make it work. And we're providing support because they, they look for the best we, that we can. And uh, I think that's what, what we're, we're all about. So there are things that we're not responsible for, we may have an interest in and may be concerned about, but when the dust settles, hey, we're not running the library. Right. You know, exactly. we're providing advice, consent, and recommendations and approvals of things that they have come up with. And I expect that will continue. So that's our job. And they know their job. So they did quite well. All right. What I'd like to do is hear a motion to, uh, to vote on 
our our uh, movement ahead, whether we're going to go with uh, providing something input for a, the, the November ballot. And so it's uh, if you're interested in doing that, vote uh, yeah. I, if you don't want to do it, vote nay. Um, I move to rescind and notify the El Paso County Clerk and Recorder that the Pikes Peak um, Library District Boards of, Board of Trustees will not pursue its prior motion expressing intent to participate in the November 2022 election. Correct? Yes. Okay, here's a second. <laughs> Make sure I got it right there. <laughs> second. Okay. It's been uh, moved and seconded that we uh, submit this to uh, folks to take care of the ballot that we are not interested in doing, going further with this. So all in favor, say aye. Um, hang on. I, I think we should do individual votes like we did. We did individual vote last yeah, time. we did last time, but I think we I got sense different sense right now than we had last time. But yeah, if that'll make you feel good, Scott, we'll do that. Nina, you look Wait, I'm just clarifying. So yes is rescinding because yes. I just well, I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. yeah. Is yes. moving forward. Okay. I'm reading Thank you, Mina. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm reading it and thinking to myself, I know. what am I trying to say? Okay. okay. We're all smart people just need to make sure we know what we're saying. So thank you. Okay. Okay. You want to call a roll for each person vote separately? Sure. I'm just going to go around the room in no okay. particular order. <laughs> Aaron Bent. Yes, to resent. Debbie English? Yes. Dora? Yes, with the commentary that uh, we realize our community needs, and we will definitely think I, if being on the board, I will definitely bring this up at a later time. So I just want everybody to know that we're not just going to say we're rescinding and we're not going to we're not going to visit this. We're going to continue visiting this at another time. Okay, Dr. Stoll. Yes. Scott Taylor. Yes. Aaron Salt. Yes. Mina. Oh, Mina, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, echoing what Dora said. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, honestly, uh, the, the, the actions we need to take about this or zero. And because the bottom line is we sent them, sent them an intent. We had an intent to do that. Right. But we're not going to take a next step. We don't have to send that to anybody. We don't have to tell anybody else. It's just. There's no further right. action that's needed by the board. No, so no further action. That gives us another quarter million dollars to spend on something else. Well. Anyway. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything to share before we close? I think we need to say thank you to our leadership team and the PPLD staff for exploring this with us, doing the research, doing the due diligence over the last year and then some to, to take us to where we are now. It's unfortunate that our, our landscape politically, economically, otherwise out of our control is what it is. And we want to make sure that I think as the board, we are still advocates for the library district and all that it stands for and is supposed to be for our community. So I just want to express that because well that. Yeah. it's so much work Absolutely. to do this and to have the right messaging, to step up and, and be brave truly um, in a place like in this current state of the world. So thank you to the leadership team yeah. and to the PPLD staff. Second. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I, I would like to say uh, something to those on the call that are not associated with the library, but they use the library. Um, if you feel like you want to make sure that your voice is heard, we do allow public comments during every board meeting and you are all invited to come and and voice your concerns or your opinions that that's what that 
that section of, of the board meeting is for. So, and then of course, we still have that availability online to use, like reach out to the board. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what we've got all those things in place for. So if, if you want to be heard, those are the best things to do. And since we do offer the ability to do this online, you are welcome to uh, do the same thing online uh, during the board meetings. So I just want to point that out. Okay. Uh, 2 30, 2 40, and I <laughs> may adjourn. <laughs> well, sure yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.